The Tunguska event is the largest impact event in recorded history, so why do scientists still argue over its cause? In this video, I'll give you a brief overview of the aftermath of one of the largest explosions in history, along with its suspected causes. On 30th of June 1908, a remote area of Siberia witnessed one of the most devastating explosions in history. Estimates vary, but it's commonly thought the explosion over the Tunguska River was a massive 15 megatons. To put the sheer size of this explosion into context, the Castle Bravo nuclear bomb was the largest nuclear weapon the United States ever tested. It too was around 15 megatons. This is a staggering 1000 times more powerful than Little Boy, the nuclear bomb that was dropped on Japan. The Tunguska event levelled and burnt a staggering 2,100 kilometres of boreal forest, flattening some 80 million trees. This explosion would have completely levelled almost any major city on Earth. We are lucky then that this explosion happened in the remote wilderness of central Siberia. Rather than killing hundreds of thousands of people, it's estimated that three lives were claimed. Almost two decades after the explosion, a Russian mineralogist, Leonid Kulik, led an expedition that finally reached the explosion's epicenter. Most of the scientists at the time expected to find a large crater. Indeed, Kulik's expedition was predicated on the assumption that a wealth of meteoric minerals would be found. To the scientists' surprise, the swampy area that marked the explosion's epicenter featured trees that still stood upright. They were badly scorched and had no branches, but were still standing. This was in direct contrast to the trees surrounding the blast area, which had been knocked down in a radial pattern away from the epicenter. Kulik found what he believed were other clues as well. A few dozen pothole bogs were discovered. They ranged from 10 to 50 meters wide, which Kulik ascribed as meteoric craters. After laboriously draining one of these bogs, he found an old tree stump at the bottom ruling out the possibility that it was a meteorite crater. It was later discovered that these pothole bogs had a natural explanation. When Kulik returned, some scientists thought that Lake Checo, the lake at the explosion's epicenter, was in fact the impact crater. They claimed that wildlife had recovered in the almost two decades since the event. However, research concluded that the presence of meters thick silt deposits at the bottom of the lake meant it had to be far older than the Tunguska event. Some even suggested that the lake was over 5,000 years old based on the study. Later expeditions to the area in the 1950s and 60s uncovered microscopic silicate and magnetite spheres. Chemical analysis of these spheres ruled that they were likely of extraterrestrial origin. The chemical analysis disproved a the theory that a huge natural gas leak in the Earth's crust had caused the explosion. There were now three other main theories. Due to the development of noctilucent clouds in the skies following the event, many scientists thought that the object must have been an icy comet rather than a rocky asteroid, as one of the other theories suggested. The third theory was made by a Russian science fiction writer who enraged the scientific community when he suggested the object could have been an extraterrestrial spaceship facing some kind of calamity at the end of its voyage. He cited the startling similarities between the Tunguska event and the bombing of Hiroshima. To disprove this theory, Russian scientists scoured the explosion epicenter in a bid to find any radiation that could prove or disprove this theory. The spaceship theory was considered disproved when the scientists found no meaningful radiation, although some conspiracy theorists still believe this was the cause of the explosion. The comet theory is also mainly considered to be disproved. An astronomer in 1983 pointed out that an object of cometary material travelling at an angle similar to the path of the Tunguska event should have been vaporised whereas a dense rocky asteroid could have remained intact. Researchers bolstered the asteroid theory further when a study confirmed that the object was 83% likely to have originated from the asteroid belt. Today, the most commonly recognised explanation is that an asteroid airburst caused the Tunguska event. Travelling at around 40,000 miles per hour and around 50 to 80 metres wide, 
it exploded at an altitude of around 10 kilometers, causing widespread devastation to the local wildlife. Trees directly below the explosion were stripped of branches but left standing upright as the blast wave moved vertically downward. Trees further away were knocked down as the blast wave moved closer to horizontal. It's now thought that impacts of this size happen at an average interval scale of millennia, not century, as previously thought. <laughs>